Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another looking uh, review, I guess I should say. Welcome to another v review of a patch, patch 3.13. This is the long-awaited harrowing patch, in other words, the Halloween update for 2013. It is very delayed. The patch came out on October 30th. If you are from North America, you probably know that Halloween is celebrated on October 31st. I'm not really sure why a Halloween type patch celebration came out one day before Halloween and will largely be running through November, which is long after the holiday has passed. Not the best work on Riot's part. They definitely should have had this sooner. It's also a pretty lame harrowing because they only had one new Halloween themed skin. That is the Zyra skin that they just created. Uh, and they just reused a lot of content from previous years. Old skins, old ward skins, no update to the map. It's a pretty, pretty lousy harrowing this year. By far the worst that they've done in their four years. But that said, if anyone would like to send me a mystery gift skin, please feel free to do so. I will not object to that. All right, let's actually look at what's in this patch. This is a fairly large patch. This is probably the last patch before the beginning of Season 4. I say that because a lot of the Season 4 changes are currently on the PBE, the public beta environment, and you can see what some of the stuff that's coming down the pipeline looks like. Usually when stuff goes on the PBE, that means it's going to be in the next patch. Not always, but likely. So we may be getting the season, the beginning of Season 4 next time, which will mean that the next patch will be absolutely gigantic. Let's look at what's in this one, because this one is pretty big in and of itself. Okay, Riot has regrouped these. They've redone the patch contents into groups here. We'll start by looking at some of the general and client stuff. They made some changes that allows them to provide more loss forgiven to servers experiencing hardware issues. I'm sure EU West will enjoy that one since EU West seems to crash every two days. They can now disable in-game items and features on the fly. If something pops up, we'll see that happen instead of just turning off all ranked games, blah, blah, blah. Improved champ select timer accuracy and reliability. It will now accurately sync the timer. This is when you're in the picks and banning phase. Apparently, there were some issues with the clock. Now it will sync up better. So that's nice, I suppose. Fix an issue where the screen would flicker black, blah, blah, blah. They removed the Season 3 World Championship Team icons. I don't think they really needed to, needed to do that. I don't see why it would be a problem if someone wanted to have, like, an SK Telecom icon or, I don't know, like, a Fnatic icon. I don't see why those really needed to be removed, but they're gone, so if you like them... Can't use them any longer. Probably have to remove them so they can get people to repurchase them next year for Season 4 World Championship, but I don't really understand why they didn't just stay in the store if people like them. Uh, and then finally, fix an issue where purchase champions and skins would disappear. In rare circumstances, that sounds like something that would be good to fix. Friends list have fixed some corrupted friends list caused by third-party chat clients. That sounds good. Fix an issue where a player and a pending friend request would appear online after sending them a game invite, blah, blah, blah. Basically, just fixing some bugs with the friend list. Game interface fixed a bug where some options, such as moving camera on respawn, would not save. Thank you for that. I, I don't know how everyone else feels, but that whole issue where the camera would, like, randomly fly off to another part of the map after you come back from dying. Don't really understand why that happens. Apparently, that option was not saving, so I'm glad they fixed that. Here's the biggest change to the game interface, this one right here. Players who receive messages while scrolling through chat history will no longer have their chat jump to the bottom. This is a great improvement, and this is something that people have been asking for for a very long time. So what people will often do in games, you've probably seen this if you've been around the competitive league scene, is people will type dragon timers, buff timers, baron timers into the chat so you know when it's going to respawn. And oftentimes you'd have to scroll back up through the chat history, like scroll the chat back up to see when that is. If anyone typed anything and you're looking for a, a timer, it would jump down to the bottom of the list. And then as people are having a conversation, it would keep jumping down over and over again. It's so, so incredibly irritating. So now it won't do that. So every jungler and every support are issuing sighs of thanks because they're the ones who most typically are looking for timers in the chat, so that's a really nice, really nice improvement, and I will definitely be making use of that. Okay, in-game mechanics, there's not a ton of them, there were some things. Here's their uh, change here. Attack speed slows can now be cleansed if they were movement impairing crowd control effects. Previously, you could only cleanse an attack speed slow if it also had a movement impairing effect, so now you can cleanse uh, Gragas' barrel roll, Malphite's grand, Ground Slam, and also the slow from Randwins and Warden's Mail. You can now cleanse those things that only at affect attack speed, not movement speed. So it's not a lot of abilities that are affected here, only four in the whole game. However, I'm sure there are some cases where people wish they could cleanse them. So this is, this is 
pretty minor, but it, at high level play, it might come into effect. We might see, we, it, I, I think it would be most common to see someone cleanse a Randwin's attack speed slow. Uh, then again, you might want to save your cleanse for something more important in a team fight, so keep that in mind too. And then champions with dashes tied to their ultimate, basically what's happening is the moves that are considered unstoppable, you know, that previously discarded all crowd control effects, now when the ultimates will still finish their movements, but afterwards, crowd control effects will persist after the cast finishes. So the best example of this is Malphite's ult, Malphite's Unstoppable Force. What they're saying is if somebody snares you or roots you or binds you in the middle of Unstoppable Force, you'll still go through with you know the charging animation. That won't be canceled. But when it's over, you'll then be rooted or snared or stunned or whatever. So that's the case for uh, a couple of these. Uh, the two most important ones are probably Malphite and Vi. They're one, the ones you're likely to see most often. And Hecarim, I suppose, as well. Nocturne, Paranoia, Jarvan, Cataclysm as well, although those, I guess you're, you're, you're maybe a little bit less likely to see them, because Jarvan's whole untargetable thing lasts for like, like three tenths of a second when he jumps in and dunks someone. Still, that is a change, so it is a bit of a nerf to these champions, but it's fairly minor. Uh, it just means that you can't dodge a crowd control effect by using these ults, and if you get hit by something, it'll still take effect after the ultimate is over or after the animation's over. So that's a little bit of a change. Here's a nice little interface thing. Any stealth champion, anytime you go stealth, there now is a self-only screen tint visual effect. So for Akali's smoke cloud, and for Kha'Zix when he pops his ult, and Shaco when he you know goes invisible, etc., etc. I've seen this in-game. It's like a blue filter is put over the screen. Fairly minor, but you will notice it. And it basically it tells you when you're invisible. So that's pretty nice. They did not add this for Evelyn because she is permanently stealthed, basically. And you see when you are revealed. But uh, pretty much every other stealth champion gets this. So it's a nice little visual effect. All right, let's go in and look at the champs. And there are a lot of champions getting almost entirely nerfed in this patch. It's a very nerf-heavy patch. This is the patch where Riot has looked at what was being played at the World Championships and they finally decided we're going to hit all those champions that were heavily played, or most of them. Some champions got out without getting touched. For example, Renekton, very heavily prized, highly picked and contested in the World Championships. And Renekton is untouched for some reason, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Also, Jax, very, very highly prized at Worlds, not touched in this patch. So it's always a bit random what they choose to go after. Well, let's look at what they did. Aatrox, first up, Aatrox has somehow managed to go for months and months without being nerfed, despite being extremely popular, especially in Europe, where he is very, very popular. Now he's finally been nerfed, so his passive is Bloodwell. He now gets a scaling passive attack speed, starts at 30%, goes up to 55%, instead of 50% flat. So that's a obviously a nerf, because you have to hit level, let's see, every three champion levels, you have to hit level 15 to get back to the old value. So that's pretty clearly a nerf. I don't care if at level 18 he gets a 5% bonus. That's a big time nerf. He'll be much weaker at lower levels. And his Blades of Torment, that is his E. The damage has been reduced across the board. Well, not across the board. It's the same at rank 1, but it is 40 damage lower at rank 5. And that's a big deal because Aatrox has almost always maxed this skill first. And 40 damage lower at rank 5, that is a sizable reduction in damage. So they hit Aatrox pretty hard in this patch. Uh, obviously still playable, but noticeably weaker than he was. Uh, this this is a sizable nerf, and the Bloodwell one is also quite sizable. This is not minor at all. There, you, you are going to feel these changes if you're an Aatrox player. Now that said, Aatrox did not get hit as bad as Ari, so if you're an Ari player, it's, you know, it's, it's big time, big time sad time for you, because Ari was essentially destroyed in this patch, and Ari is uh, just about unplayable now as a result of this. For some reason, there is somebody at Riot who really didn't like Ari, uh, because she got brutally hit in this patch. Let's look at what they actually did. I'm not going to read all this. You can you can pop open up the patch notes, check it out yourself if you're curious. Okay, they've changed her passive. Now heals Ari for 2 plus 1 per champion level. Each time her passive enhanced spells, it's an enemy. Previously, 35% spell vamp. 35% uh, spell vamp, way better than this new essence step that deals like no healing whatsoever. Uh, the spell vamp scaled much, much better into, into the late game. And uh, was honestly probably better early game as well. So this is a big time nerf to her sustain in lane. Significantly lower. Spell vamp, you know, the flat 35% spell vamp was quite good. 
All right, let's look at Foxfire. Now, they did reduce the mana cost, so that's nice. It's actually very cheap to cost now at only 50, 50 mana. However, diminishing returns have been increased. Now, diminishing returns of 70% instead of 50%. Before, best case was 100 plus 50 plus 50. Now, it's 100 plus 30 plus 30, so that's a big-time nerf. This reduces the same target damage from, you can see, 64 up to 224 plus 0.64 ability power. Uh, that's from 80 up to 280 and with a much better ability power ratio. So this is a brutal nerf in damage. Way, way lower. It's less damage at all ranks and the scaling's lower too. So much, much lower damage on Foxfire. Uh, not nearly enough to make up for the fact that it's cheaper in mana cost. It's like, okay, that's great, but the damage is significantly lower. I mean, look at this, 224 down to 280 for single target damage. That's a brutal, diff brutal lowering. Plus, the ability power ratio got cut by about 0.15, so that's, you know, sizably less. That's, uh, let's say you're at about mm, 300 ability power. That's fairly common for RE late game. You've got, like, a DFG, Deathfire Grasp, maybe an Abyssal, and maybe to working towards, a, maybe, like, a Zanya's. Uh, let's see, at 300 ability power, you're losing 45 damage further off this. So you're losing, six, you're losing about 100 damage off this on a single target. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot of damage. Uh, now, they also hit Spirit Rush. Base damage has been reduced from 70 up to 150, down from 85 to 165. Also note the ability power ratio is lower as well. This reduces max target damage from 450 plus 0.9 ability power, down from 495 with 1.05 ability power ratio. This one not as bad, but the damage is quite a bit lower as well, so they've cut the damage on this skill. Now in exchange for this, they have slightly changed around what the charm looks like. Now increases the magic damage RE deals to the target for 20% for 6 seconds. So what this means is, in order to get the same damage as RE was doing before, now you have to hit the charm. If you miss your charm, you do way less damage. If you hit the charm, you do about the same damage you did before. Uh, which, which obviously means that that's a brutal nerf to her damage, because you now have to hit a... Fairly difficult to hit skill shots because charm's pretty easy to dodge. You have to hit that skill shot just to get the same damage back you were doing before. Otherwise, your damage is much, much lower. And the mana cost was brutally nerfed as well. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. It's, uh, you know, the mana cost was went up to 110 before. Now it's only 85. It's like, well, that's nice. Except that charm is Ari's one-point skill. This is the skill you put one point in. So you were used to having charm at 50 mana, and now it's 85. So it's, it's a sizable increase in mana cost. Now you have to put four points in the skill to get the, uh, a, a, um, a, you know, a, you need four points in the skill basically to be at the point where this is saving you mana, and you're not going to have four points in the skill until level 17, which is extremely late in the game. So this is a nerf to the mana cost. So anyway, her sustain was hit, her Foxfire does way less damage, her Spirit Fire does less damage, her Charm basically costs more mana for the vast majority of the game, Ari got hit and hit hard. Uh, somebody really did not like the Nine-Tailed fo Nine Fox in this patch. I don't know why. I do think that she could have been hit with nerfs, but this feels like it's way overkill, and uh, we will not see Ari played for a very long time. So wave, wave goodbye to Ari. She had her fun, had her fun at Season Three World Championships, and she's she's basically done. You won't see her until she gets buffed, and that probably won't be for a long time. So Season Four, we won't be seeing Ari. Sorry, Ari players. She's just done. <laughs> All right, Corky. Corky was also a darling of Season 3 World Championships. He was overbuffed in previous patches, and it was very obvious that he was getting overbuffed. So when Trinity Force also got buffed, uh, Corky became overpowered. Now he's getting cut down to speed again. Corky was already hurt in the last patch because they changed the Phage component of Trinity Force. They made it so Phage... Only did only got half of its movement speed bonus for ranged champions, so that hurt Quirky quite a bit. Now he's getting hurt further. Uh, right here, they've given him a nerf to his base attack speed, uh, cut down by. We can see the numbers. It's it, which is quite sizable in the early game when you've got you can you really do feel that base attack speed nerf in the early game. So that's that's pretty noticeable right there. And they also nerfed his Missile Barrage. They reduced the base damage by uh, 20 at rank 1 and by 10 at rank 2. It goes back to the same value at rank 3. So that's a nerf to his early game. And you will feel that, particularly at level 6, where you're losing 20 damage off each, each Missile Barrage. Here's the real nerf, though. Cooldown between Missile Shots increased to 2 seconds from 1.2. And cooldown between Missile Shots no longer reduced by cooldown reduction. Uh, it does still affect how quickly you gain Missile Ammo, but does not affect how quickly you can shoot them. So let's say you're quirky, and in the past, 
you're probably going to pick up blue buff at some point in time. If you've got the blue buff, you're firing missiles basically every one second with that 20% CDR. Now you have to wait two seconds before you can fire a missile. That's a big loss in damage because Corky relies on firing missiles to get Sheen procs for his, uh, for his auto attacks. That's kind of the basic idea is you fire missiles and you use your phosphor bomb and then that, that procs your sheen from Trinity Force. So if you can only fire missile shots every two seconds instead of every basically one second, that is a drastic curtailing of his damage. So this this really hurts Quirky badly. Uh, it's, it's a sizable drop off in his damage. Now, I think that Quirky's still playable, but he is not nearly at the point where he was before. He has been greatly weakened by these changes. Uh, so Quirky... Also, will likely fall back. I, I think we'll still see him competitively, but I think we'll see more of a shift towards Ezreal because Ezreal and Corky always have very similar kits. I think we'll see a shift away from Corky and more towards Ezreal, uh, who was not affected by this attack speed nerf, uh, damage nerf to Missile Barrage. I think we'll just see Ezreal more again as a result of this. Okay, other stuff, Fizz. Now, Fizz was also another darling of Season 3 World Championships. Fizz was, in fact, picked specifically as a counter to Ari in a lot of circumstances. Fizz was widely expected he would get fairly heavy nerfs, but unlike Ari, Fizz actually comes through this almost entirely untouched. So, what have they done? Well, they fixed a bug with Playful Trickster, which has been one of the buggiest skills in League for a long time. Uh, they fixed another, yet another bug with this skill. And they reduced the ability power ratio on his Seastone Trident. I believe that that's his W, but I'm, I'm not a Fizz player. It might be in one of the other keys. I believe that this is his W. Active ability power ratio reduced from 0.35 down to 0.15. Obviously, that's a significant drop-off in terms of the damage on this skill. Definitely hurts it. That said, most Fizzes do not max this skill first. They typically max Playful Trickster first. And they didn't do anything to cut the base damage, just the ability power ratio scaling. So this is fairly minor overall. Yes, it hurts, obviously. It means Fizz doesn't scale quite as well as he did before. But it's certainly not enough to get people to stop playing Fizz. He's still a very good choice for mid lane. And it's not going to get people to stop playing him. So Fizz, largely untouched, which is kind of weird when you consider how, how brutally Ari was hit in this patch. So as I've said, Riot, not always the most consistent group. They generally get things right, but some of the decisions will leave your head scratching. Um, you know, based on how much we saw Fizz and Ari played, you would have thought they'd get similar treatment, but Ari gets killed and Fizz is light, very lightly slapped on the wrist. Just a, just a little touch on the wrist for Fizz. So he comes out without too much issue. Now, Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger was completely reworked in this patch. I'm not going to read all this. Of course, if you want to check it out, you can. I also put up a video looking at some of the Heimer skills just a couple days ago, so you may want to check that out on this channel if you haven't already, just to see some examples of Heimer's gameplay. Overall, he mostly plays the way that he did before. His skills are very similar to the way they were before. He does seem noticeably stronger, though, compared to pre-rework. Uh, and he also has a bit of a higher skill cap because he's more skill shot based, largely due to how his missiles, his micro rockets work. Let's look at this. Uh, passive. Passive is, I believe, the same as it was before. If the numbers are different, I could be wrong, but it's very close to the way it was before. He gives passive health regen both to himself, nearby allied champions, and his evolution turrets. This is one reason why Heimer's really, really good at Aram, the, uh, the all random, all mid map. Uh, on the Howling Abyss because everybody on his team gets that passive health regen. It's one reason why he's really good on that map. Okay, his Q is pretty similar to the way it was before. He puts down a little turret, places a turret at target location. Turrets prioritize Heimerdinger's targets, so if you want the turrets to hit somebody, you if you auto-attack them, the targets will prioritize that. And also enemies attacking Heimerdinger, so they will be more likely to prioritize champions hitting you. Generates a turret kit every roughly 20 to 25 to 20 seconds. He can hold up to three kits at once at max rank. Cost is 20 mana in one kit. The cooldown is one second, so you can put down a kit every second. You can hold up to three of them at once. Here's a change. You can now have up to three turrets on the map at once. Prior to this, it was two turrets on the map at once, so that's a bit of a change. Health, 150 plus 25 champion level. Uh, attack, you can see the damage they do. Scales off ability power. The cannons now have a new beam attack. Every 12 seconds, they will fire a beam attack in a line. You can see how much damage this does. So the cannons basically are quite frail. They don't have a lot of health. 
Uh, they do a decent amount of damage. If you get three of them down, firing in, you know, sort of in a, in a small area can deal quite a bit of damage, especially if those beams come out. Uh, that said, I'm not sure if this is the best skill to max first. You max this first if you want to push, but it does seem as though this is not Heimerdinger's best skill after the rework. It feels as though this is his best skill, the Hextech Micro Rocket. So let's look at this. Unleashes the barrage of five rockets that converge towards your cursor and fan out past it. Each rocket deals 180 plus 45 ability power magic damage. Enemies that are hit by more than one rocket do take only 20% magic damage for each additional rocket. So the max damage is up to 324 at five points in the skill. And minions take 60% instead. What this means is this is a very good uh, skill for poking. It's very good for farming. It's a great wave clearing skill. Now it is a skill shot now. Uh, based on where you put the cursor, that increases the spread of the projectiles. So based on where you put the cursors, you can get sort of a very wide spread or a very tight line of micro rockets. It depends on where you put that mouse cursor. This is, this is changed from the old Heimerdinger. The old Heimerdinger, this was not a skill shot. It just hit whoever was closest to you. So what this means is the skill cap for Heimer has been increased. It requires more of skill to play him. Uh, and then you see the mana and the cooldown. But uh, this skill deals a lot of damage. It's good wave clear. It's good poke. If you can hit somebody with all five of the rockets, then the damage is very high. 324 is very high for a normal skill. So uh, I think that this is probably the skill to max first. Probably. After that, I'm less certain about whether to go for Q or E. Let's look at the grenade. Hurls a grenade that deals 60 up to 220, plus 0.6 ability power, magic damage to enemy units. Also slows movement speed by 35% for 2 seconds. Enemies in the center of the blast are also stunned for 1.25 seconds. Uh, and then the cooldown goes down very sharply as more points in the skill. Uh, 85 mana cost. So if you're more interested in poking, then this is a good skill to max second, largely to get that cooldown dropped. Obviously, 18 going down to 10 is a very, very big reduction. At 18 second cooldown, you're rarely going to be using this. At a 10 second cooldown, you're going to use it a lot. Uh, keep in mind as well that Heimer benefits hugely from cooldown reduction. He really wants cooldown reduction because all his cooldowns are so long. Like this is 20 seconds per, per uh, evolution turret kit, 11 seconds, 10 seconds. These are long cooldowns, so he really does need cooldown reduction. But with max CDR, you can be using this every 6 seconds as opposed to every 18. So that's a huge, huge increase. Basically, as I said, if you're going to poke, if you're looking to poke, poke the other person, max this second. If you're looking to push a lane, max your turret second. So as I said, it's more of whether you're going for a poke or a push strat in lane. Uh, one nice thing about the grenade is you can get most of the value with one point in the skill. Uh, you do get the full stun duration with one point. You don't need extra points for more slow or more stun. Uh, one other thing I will point out, though, is if you look at the turrets, you need to put more points in the turret to get more damage. Note that the damage is quite low unless you put more points. But the health scales off of champion level, not on ranks in the turrets. So if you max the turrets last, they do get the full health value. Now, granted, they're not going to be doing much damage, but they will continue to scale off your champion level in terms of health. So that is an argument for maxing the turrets last. But if you're looking to push lanes, you'll want to max this sooner so you get more damage and can push the lane sooner. Anyway, let's then look at his ultimate. Heimerdinger's next basic spell is free and has bonus effects. What that means is uh, you do have to pay 100 mana, but it's, it's free in terms of cooldown, that sort of thing. You can put down a super turret, places a turret that deals uh, a lot of damage, basically. And deal, that laser deals especially high magic damage with its beam. So basically, you put down a super turret. This does not count against his turret limit. So if you want just a really big turret in a team fight, you can put this down. It will deal a lot of damage if people ignore it. Hextech Rocket Swarm. This is better for sort of 1v1. Fires four waves of rockets, 225 plus 0.45 ability power. Champions and monsters hit by multiple rockets take reduced damage. But if you hit with all the rockets, look at the damage. 865 plus 1.83 ability power. Holy cow. And this is a really neat graphical effect too. It's just these waves of rockets that come out. So this is the best for 1v1 pretty much. It's also the best if you're looking for burst damage. The turret is probably more damage in terms of sustained damage. Because it, you know, if, if a team fight goes on for a long time. This will probably output more damage than the Rocket Swarm, but you'll probably be using the Rocket Swarm most often just because it's a huge burst of damage in a little, in, in sort of like a one second go. 
And then finally, the Lightning Grenade. There's a grenade that discharges three times, deals 250 plus 0.6 ability power magic damage each time. So the magic damage is pretty respectable. It's not as much as the rockets, but it's pretty good. Both the stun and slow areas are larger, and the slow is improved to 80%. I've heard this being compared to a, sort of a Leona's a Solar Flare Ultimate. I haven't seen it in-game yet, but I've said, heard people say, this is pretty much like a Leona's Solar Flare Ultimate. So... The grenade gives you crowd control, the turret gives you damage over time, and the rocket swarm is like burst damage, in immediate, in sort of immediate burst damage. Uh, and the cooldown is very short, only 70 at rank 3, at level 16. Uh, reduce, with cooldown reduction, that's down to about 45 seconds. Yeah, about 45 seconds. So um, that cooldown feels a little bit low, and all three of these are very good. Now, how strong is Heimer at the rework? Hard for me to say. I haven't seen him played enough to get a firm opinion, but he feels pretty solid, uh, fairly versatile in terms of what he does. Obviously, he leans towards poking and pushing. His weakness, as before, is he doesn't offer very much in the way of crowd control. He does have the grenade, but it's a skill shot. Doesn't offer that much in the way of crowd control. And he's quite vulnerable to ganks because he has no escape skills. His only escape is hitting you with a grenade as you run in to gank him. So not a lot of escapability, but overall his kit has pretty good utility. Good damage, good utility, great pushing power. He feels pretty good after this rework, in all honesty. Like, I could definitely see people playing him. Uh, I'm hoping that his kit gets left alone for a couple weeks and that we will be able to maybe see him in competitive play. Uh, in some of the upcoming stuff, because there is going to be some upcoming stuff in, um, like, at the beginning of December with the new Season 4 stuff. So I'm, I'm interested to see this. We might see the Donger in some competitive play again, which we have not seen since Season 1. Yes, Heimerdinger was played in Season 1 a little bit uh, by, by Dan Din, played him a little bit on Epic Gamer. I remember that. So perhaps we'll get to see that again. But anyway, I've said enough about Heimer. This video is going to be long enough. Let's move on. Look at some of the other champs. Jinx. Jinx, of course, as I said in the last patch review, I said, Jinx is really, really strong. She's going to get nerfed. Well, she did get nerfed, but but not as much as I thought. Uh, she didn't get nerfed by very much, and, and I think she'll get nerfed more again. Let's look at what they did. They hit her Q, and they hit her W. They did not touch her passive. They did not touch her ult, which still feel very strong. So let's look at this. The attack speed bonus has been reduced at lower levels. Now it's only 30% from 50%, but it scales up to the same value. It goes up to 130% again. So this is a hit to Jinx's early game, but it doesn't touch her mid game or her late game. Uh, I do feel that with the change to this, this you now need to max this first. I feel like you really need to max her Q first. You want to get back up to that 130% on the minigun. Note that the range on the other half of her Q, on her rocket launcher, has not been affected at all. So I still feel like you max Q first, and by the time you get up to level 9, you're exactly where you were before. Uh, so, I mean, this hurts her early game, but it's, it's I mean, yes, she, she's basically weaker at levels 1 through 5, pretty much. That's the big change here. After level 9, not a big deal. Zap, they have reduced the base damage. They reduced this, uh, but in the same way that they reduced, they, they hurt her Q. Now it only deals 10 damage plus, uh, plus her, her flat attack damage at rank 1 instead of 30, but it goes right back up to the same value again at rank 5. It's right back up to 210 again. And they haven't touched the insane scaling on this skill. This skill has uh, 1.4 total attack damage scaling, which is really high. You know, if you have, let's say you have 200 attack damage, right? That's not really that high. That means that you do 280 plus 210 with this skill at uh, after it's been maxed out. So you do about 500 damage with this skill. And that's, you know, not, not out of the question at all. 200 attack damage is not all that much for an AD. Uh, they also increase the mana cost, but by only 5 at all ranks. At 5 at all ranks. That's the only change. I mean, that's... I mean, I guess you feel it, but it's pretty low. It's pretty minor. So what this means is that rank 1, Zap is not as good. Uh, you know, if you put 1 point in the skill, it's, it's noticeably weaker. 20 points damage less... 20 points less damage. Uh, and it also no longer reveals stealth units. Okay, that was pretty ridiculous that this slowed and revealed stealth units. But they didn't hit the slow. It still has insane scaling. It's barely more in mana cost. And once you max it, it's exactly as strong as it was before. So these are pretty modest nerfs. Not much going on here. I still feel like Jinx is just about the strongest AD in the game right now. If she's not, then she's very close to it. Particularly with, um, you know, with Quirky getting hit in this patch... It feels like Jinx and Vayne are really the strongest two ADs. At least that's my opinion personally. 
and she just wasn't hit very hard at all. So keep, you know, if you like Jinx, keep playing her by, by, by all means. She is a very, very common ban at high elo. And her win rate is extremely high as well. Uh, she has one of the, she's in the top 10 for win percentage, which is very rare for a champion that has only been out for a short period of time. Uh, her play rate and her win rate are both extremely high. On uh, on the when the from the groups that compile those, so Jinx is really good still, and she was just not these nerfs barely affect her at all. So keep playing Jinx, basically. She will get nerfed more in the future. She's still overpowered, not brokenly so, but still overpowered. She will get nerfed more in the future. Speaking of champions that are going to get nerfed more in the future, how about Cassidy? Cassidy is up to a 90% ban rate in ranked play at all levels of play. He's banned 90% of the time. So that should tell you something about Cassidy. People just think he's overpowered. People don't want to deal with him. His gameplay is not fun. So in this patch, he's intended to get nerfed, but he didn't really get nerfed very much at all. Uh... They, I mean, I think this was intended to be a nerf, but if anything, he's kind of just as strong as he was before. In some ways, he's stronger. Let's look at what they did. So they hit his, they removed his magic resist per level scaling, and this is the biggest nerf that casting got. So at level 18, he's got about 20, 20 less magic resist, and that is a real nerf. I mean, this is the biggest thing that happened to him. So this is pretty sizable. Hurts his trading, but he does still have his passive that gives it, makes it easier for him to go in and trade. Uh, look at what they did to his null sphere. Okay. So what they did is they reduced the damage on Null Sphere at higher ranks of the skill, and because you max this first on Cassidy, this hurts pretty much, pretty hard. 220, now at max rank, down from 280, so that is a sizable drop-off in damage, very big. 60 points less is a big drop-off in damage. However, if you look at what they did, the Silence is actually better now. Uh, at low ranks, it's 1.5 second silence as opposed to 1. Yes, at max rank, it's 2.5 instead of 2.6, but the silence is actually a lot longer for most of the skill. So the silence duration is longer. And the mana cost is a lot lower too. Now it's only 90 at max rank instead of 110. So yes, the damage got nerfed, but pretty much everything else got buffed. The silence duration is better at all ranks except rank, the, the top one. And the mana cost is lower. So this makes it easier to farm at low levels when you have to sometimes queue for creeps. You sometimes have to null sphere to last hit. This makes it easier to do that. Um, so as I said, yes, the damage is lower, but everything else about this skill is actually better. The silence is longer and the mana cost is lower too. So that's not as much of a nerf as we were expecting, honestly, after the way Cassidy just destroyed people in Worlds. Um, go back and watch Fanatics games where X Pekka played Cassidy and he was like 19 and 1 in some of those games. And then let's look at Riftwalk. They have increased the base damage. Yes, by a lot too. The base damage has gone up, uh, quite a bit. Uh, you can see 60, 70, 80. Now it's 80, 100, 120. The base damage per Riftwalk stack was reduced. So the stacking of Riftwalk is lower. But you'd have to get several stacks just to hit the old value. Um, you, I believe you'd have to get about, th what, maybe three? I think it's like three stacks. Hold on, let me look at this. Let's see. Base, let's see, up to 60 from 80. So it's 20 less. Uh, yeah, so it's 20 less at max rank. Let's see. Yeah, so you'd have to get three Riftwalk stacks to get back to um, hit the point where it's it's a damage nerf. Most of the time, people are not Riftwalking into the enemy team with like six Riftwalk stacks. Usually, they go in once. You know, they usually Riftwalk in once, use their Silence, use the Null Sphere Silence, use their E, uh, their Force Pulse, and then they Riftwalk back out again. So. This is actually a buff to Riftwalk. Like, yes, this skill is actually a lot better. And they added an AP ratio. And now refunds 50% of the total mana cost when it damages an enemy champion. Like, Riftwalk got buffed a lot. It's way stronger than it used to be. I mean, this is crazy. So this was supposed to be a nerf. Look at this. Currently, we feel Kasten's play is too safe. He can consistently deal high damage. These are changes are on focused on forcing him to use Riftwalk as a significant part of his damage output, blah, blah, blah. So this is intended as a nerf, but... But he's not really a nerfed at all. I mean, he has a little bit less damage on Null Sphere, and his MR scaling, his magic resist scaling, is removed. But everything else is better about Cassidy. So if you are intending to make him weaker, you failed, Riot. You failed in this patch. So that's why he's still being banned in 90% of the games. And uh, somebody messed up, basically. He is not weaker at all. <laughs> he's actually better in most ways. The Rift Walk is way stronger than it was before. So... Um, outside of the troll potential where you're charging up eight Riftwalk stacks and going into the enemy team, outside of that, uh, he's, he's just better, so...
really silly. Uh, somebody messed up, as I said. So, uh, you know, keep keep banning Kassadin because, as I said, he's, he's actually stronger in a lot of ways than he was before. And it's certainly not going to get you to stop playing him, even though he does deal less damage with his Q. Uh, remember, no damage lost on his E, which is actually where most of his damage comes from late game. Okay, Morgana. So basically what they've done with Morgana is they are trying to bring Morgana more in line with other champions. She's still a little bit outdated because she's an older champion. As it says right here, this change is more of a modernization of Morgana and her, and her Tormented Soil. Some of these older champions have stuff that doesn't fit as well. Excuse me, so general attack range increased. 25 extra attack range, obviously that's very nice on our auto attacks. Base attack speed increased by a lot, a very sizable increase in our base attack speed. And they've improved the response of this. This probably means that the auto attack animation is better. I'm not, haven't confirmed that in game, but I'm assuming that that's what that means. Her, she always had kind of a weird auto attack, so I'm assuming that that's what that means. So basically a lot easier to last hit with autos. And the Tormented Soil has been changed. Damage per second change. Let's see, the damage is basically the same. They very slightly lowered the damage and increased the AP power ratio. They've added this now. Tormented Soil damage increased up to 15% based on missing health. So if you are missing health, it deals more damage. But overall, it doesn't change too much about the skill. Basically just a little bit more damage if people are low. Damage application increased every 0.5 seconds instead of every second. So they calculate, what is it, they calculate the damage application uh, more often, so more ticks. And they remove this. No longer applies a magic resist debuff. No longer applies an MR debuff. So overall, doesn't really change the skill that much. Just kind of change how it works. Uh, probably deals slightly more damage overall, but doesn't have the magic resist debuff on it. Doesn't really change that much about Morgana. This is the more important increase, is improved auto attacking which would be quite nice. So Morgana, I mean, we haven't really seen her much in competitive play recently. I still think she's a very solid champion. I think she should be played more in solo queue. I've always thought Morgana is a great solo queue champion because she's very good at team fighting, and there's a lot of team fighting in most solo queue. And, you know, if you hit a Dark Binding, Dark Binding makes it really easy to pick people off. It's just a great skill to have. So I, I like Morgana. I think she's still a good champion. I think she's seriously underplayed. And I think you could do very well with her in solo queue, even if she's not a great competitive champion right now. Uh, let's look at Olaf. So basically, Olaf got reworked. They changed how all his skills functioned. Uh, Riot said that they were erring on the side of caution. They didn't want him to become like super overpowered with the rework. So they kept their numbers, as it says, they were overly cautious. But uh, now that they've had a chance to look at the rework, they've said, okay, we had the numbers a little bit too low. We're going to increase them. I worry they may have gone a little too far because what they did is they basically buffed every skill. And I, I always question why Riot does this. It's like, look, you put out a patch every two weeks. If you think Olaf's too weak, how about you put out one buff and then you wait and you see, okay, is he strong enough? Yes or no. Then you put out a patch in two weeks, then you release another one buff. But instead in Riot Land, we buff four, we do, we buff four things at once. So it's a little bit silly. It's like the the great advantage of having patches that are frequent is you can make changes frequently. So I I wish that when they buffed and nerfed champions, you know, if a champion's too strong, nerf one thing and then wait and evaluate, then nerf one thing again. Or if they're too weak, buff one thing and then evaluate and then see if they've gotten to a good point. But Riot likes to do, oh, we're going to go, we're going to get Ari, we're going to nerf every one of Ari's skills and, you know, they go too far. They, they go too far in both directions. So let's look at what they did. They've increased the slow on his undertow. That is his axe throwing skill. That's his Q. So from 1 to 2, now it's up to 1.5 to 2.5. Mana cost changed to a flat 60 from a scaling 55 up to 75. Olaf's typically max this either first or second. So this is a major buff to the mana cost as well. So it's cheaper now at all everything other than rank 1. But it's basically cheaper. Vicious Strikes, attack speed, sizably buffed. Uh, it is now, it still goes up to 80% at max rank, but instead of going from 20 up to 80, it's now 40 up to 80. And this is a big deal because this is typically the skill that Olaf maxes last most of the time. At least based on what I've seen. Typically they max this last. So one point in this skill has now doubled the benefit from 20 to 40% attack speed. That's a big buff. And Reckless Swing, self-damage reduced to 30% damage dealt from 40% damage dealt. So he, he got all three of his normal skills buffed. I think that we'll see more Olaf as a result of this. His numbers were clearly a little too low, but he's now gotten all of his skills buffed, and I think he'll be someone who pops up. Uh, Olaf, right now, is probably better as a jungler than a top laner. 
I think we'll see him in the jungle. Now, granted, what's going to happen when we get the complete jungle rework in possibly the next patch, but like coming in the next month for sure, what will happen then is anybody's guess because they're going to completely change the jungle around. But just based off the current jungle we have right now, I feel like these buffs will make Olaf a pretty solid jungler. He, he clears outstandingly fast. His clear speed is insanely good. And that's something that is, well, is always a good thing, good thing to have. Uh, General Ramus received a texture update. Very nice. Not much to say. We'll skip on. Sivir. Sivir has received a rework and visual upgrade. So let's mention the visual upgrade first. The new artwork for Sivir. The in-game model looks fine. I have no complaints with the in-game sprite design or whatever you want to call it. I guess it's not a sprite because it's a 3D model, but in-game design looks fine. The portrait and the splash art is atrociously terrible. It's some of the worst artwork I've ever seen. Uh, here's the portrait. You can see it right there. It's very small. People have been calling this Bucktooth Siver, and I agree. It does look like she has little buck teeth sticking out. The portrait artwork is bad. The splash artwork is worth is worse. Siver is crouched over in the most ridiculous position. Uh, I, I saw someone do a mock graphic of this on Reddit, and it looks like Siver is being kicked in the stomach in the graphic. It looks awful. It is terrible, terrible artwork. Uh, it's so bad that I feel like you pretty much have to use a skin if you're playing a Siver because it is just that awful in terms of how it looks. So, ugh, terrible. Please, please get rid of this right. It is hideous. It is absolutely hideous. And whoever did this has no idea what a human body actually looks like. So, ugh, ugh, really bad. Uh, that said, I think Sivir is still pretty bad, so I don't think we're going to see Sivir very often. Let's look at what they did. Let's see, she has a visual upgrade. Actually, if, we, if they have a post here, maybe I can, maybe they have an up, can show you what the artwork looks like. Yes, here's the artwork. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my god. Like, seriously? Like, what is this? Look at her leg. It's, it's so bad. <laughs> like, a person's leg does not bend like this, nor does a person's spine work like this. Ugh, it's, it's, ugh. it's like the worst stuff you'll see in a comic book when they put, put especially female characters in just ridiculous positions. Ugh, awful, just awful in terms of what that looks like. Uh, anyway, so let's, let's actually look at the skills. Okay, attack speed per level reduced and reduced sharply. Uh, that is due to the fact that she has a new passive that gives her uh, bonus attack speed with ricochet. Uh, basically, she gets attack speed from other sources, but uh, that, yeah, that's a pretty sizable reduction in attack speed. That's interesting. Okay, Ricochet, her W, her Boomerang Blade is untouched. Her Q is the same as before. Most people typically max Q first, so that's untouched. Ricochet, now unactivated, Sivir's next three basic attacks will Ricochet. No longer has a maximum number of bounces, so it can bounce as much as, it, you know, can bounce up to infinite number of times, but can only strike each target once. Bounces to the closest target instead of a random target. Deals less damage to secondary targets. 50 at rank 1, up to 70%. No longer has base damage. Cooldown has been noticeably increased. It used to be down to just 3 seconds, up to 5. So basically, you can't use Ricochet as often. Um, but it now can bounce an infinite number of times. Instead of, I think before it was limited to like 3 or 4 bounces. So now it can bounce like a whole bunch of times. Uh, and now when you use it, her next three basic attacks will ricochet, not just the next basic attack. So how does this function? It's kind of hard to say because I don't play Sivir. I, I, I rarely see Sivir. She's a very uh, underplayed champion. Hard for me to say. Uh, it, the way that this feels like on paper is that in like a really crowded environment, Ricochet's better, but it might be, it's probably weaker in like a 1v1 environment or like a 2v2 environment, but in like a team fight with minions everywhere, you'll get more bounces. That's kind of what it feels like. Beyond that, I can't really speak to it because I, I don't have enough familiarity with Sivir and I don't want to spout bad information. Spell Shield, they did a modernization of Spell Shield, which is good. They reduced the mana cost to zero. So instead of costing 75 mana, it's zero. And the mana return has been reduced. It used to be a flat 150. Now it is a scaling amount. But this is much better because it, it was kind of silly. It cost 75 mana. And then if you block this skill, you got 150 back. Now it doesn't cost anything, and you only get a small amount of mana back when you block something. But that's that's better. It was, it was kind of silly that that had a mana cost on it. So Sivir is, again, based on using her spell shield to block negative incoming uh, crowd control and things like that. Her ult, okay, her ult was reworked, but her ult honestly kind of feels worse than it was before. Here's a buff. No longer has a cast time. That's kind of nice. But it no longer grants attack speed, which is kind of... Uh, 
you know, that's kind of a big nerf, to be honest. It used to grant her attack speed, and then passively the whole team got attack speed too. Now there is a new passive. You gain bonus attack speed while Ricochet is active, and that's to make up for the fact that it no longer grants attack speed. So that's kind of nice. When you have Ricochet active, you do get a lot of attack speed. So that's the idea there. Uh, movement speed begins at 60%, reduces down to 20% after full sec 4 seconds, and the cooldown's been changed, so it's longer at rank 1, shorter at rank 3. Overall, Sivir still feels pretty weak, uh, just based on what I saw. Now, I have barely seen her played. I've only seen a, like, I think I've only seen two or three Sivir games, but she just doesn't feel that good, again. And this is largely tied to the fact that she's such short range. She has 500 range, that is the shortest of any ranged AD, except Urgot, but Urgot's kind of a special case. She just doesn't have long enough range to be able to trade, and I, granted, I get that. The idea is she'll be able to use Ricochet, but you don't control Ricochet, it just randomly bounces. And I don't feel like that's enough. It's like, why would you play Sivir when you could play, like, Jinx? Or you could play Vayne, or somebody like that. Or you could play someone who scales much better in the late game, like Tristana. So I just don't see why you would play Sivir, because there's other ADs that are just better than her right now. The only real situation I can see is very situational based on the spell shield. Like, if you're up against a Tarek support, and anytime he goes to stun you, you just pop the spell shield. Okay, yes, you can use it for that kind of situation, but... Overall, I don't think she's that good, and I don't think the, the rework really changed that much. Now, maybe someone will, be, will prove me wrong, but I haven't seen anyone playing her in high elo after the rework, and the general consensus of people who play ADs is, yeah, I tried Sivir, she's still terrible. That's what I've been hearing. So, granted, anecdotes are not data, but that's what I've been hearing, and I haven't seen anyone posting on Reddit saying, like, oh my god, have you seen the new Sivir? She's amazing. No, 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 nothing like that. So, all right, let's continue working through this. This video is Going on long enough, we'll try to get through. We're getting closer to the end. Zed, Zed has been nerfed. Zed is somebody who, uh, of course, was another very, very popular champion all through Season 3. Zed's been a balanced pain point for a while, you can see, especially at the competitive level. Riot has trouble with Zed because if they nerf him for competitive play, he becomes useless for the casual average player who can't do all the crazy moves. So here's what they chose to do. They have nerfed his W, his, his Shadow clone, significantly increased the time it takes for the Living Shadow to reach its destination. Missile speed reduced from 2,500 down to 15. And they've also changed how the Living Shadow functions on, with his ultimate, his Death Mark. Now spawns the Living Shadow at Zed's starting point rather than behind the target. Increased the time Zed's untargetable. Death Mark Shadow duration increased. Increased the range at which Zed can switch places. Here's the consensus from people who played Zed. Zed still has not lost any of his damage. He still has the ability to burst people down. So he's unfun in that respect, because people don't like playing against Zed who can burst them 100 to 0. He's still not fun to play against. But with the reworks to how his W works, with the reworks to his Shadow Clones, basically, he now feels really sluggish and unresponsive. Uh, because of how much slower his skills function. So he's now still unfun to play against, but now he's not as much fun to play as is what people are saying. People are like, yeah, Zed feels really sluggish. He's not fun to play. What this means is, this was a bad way to nerf Zed. As I said, he still has all his damage intact, but he's no longer fun or exciting to play. That's a bad place to be in. So I think we're going to see this reworked. What would have been smarter would probably have been to keep the fun gameplay intact, but to reduce his base damage and his scaling a little bit. I, I mean, I applaud Riot for trying to be creative, but I don't think this nerf worked. And people are not still not enjoying Zed. Like, all the Zed players have said he's not fun to play. And that's a bad situation to be in when you're running a free-to-play game. You don't want people saying, wow, I liked that champion before, but now I hate playing him. Bad situation. So I hope that they will think about re undoing this and then looking to nerf Zed in a different way. Okay, Ziggs. Boy, we are still got more champions. Holy cow. Ziggs, they have uh, buffed Ziggs quite a bit. He actually got buffed to just about every skill. So again, Riot Logic, champions underplayed. Left, let's buff every skill to make him played more. Anyway, so Ziggs, Short Fuse, his passive, the damage on Short Fuse is increased. More damage, not a lot, but his auto attacks deal more damage. Here's a buff to a quality of life, buff to Bouncing Bomb. This is his Q, this is his biggest uh, skill you max first. Now, when you cast outside of maximum range, will fire to maximum range in the targeted direction. That is a nice buff. Very big quality of life buff. Whereas before, if you clicked outside maximum range, Ziggs would walk in that direction and then throw a bomb in that direction. Now he'll just throw the bomb in that direction at max range. That's very, very nice. Believe me, I've played some Ziggs, and this makes this skill a lot easier to use. 
Satchel Charge, the radius has been increased from 325 up from 275. That range was already increased in the past. I believe it was 250 when it came out. Now it's increased again. So more knockback on enemies, more knock away if you're trying to escape, uh, gank, something like that. Hexplosive Minefield, damage radius per mine increased. And this is the real big buff. No longer deals reduced damage on multiple hits to minions. So minions do not take reduced damage on multiple hits. This means that this, which was already a good wave clearing tool, is even better at a wave clearing tool. And Mega Inferno Bomb now deals double damage to minions. So his farming potential just went even higher as a result of this patch. And Ziggs already had good wave clear. So... Buffs all around, every skill is better, all five of his skills. Ziggs is actually a really good champion that scales into late game. His scaling is great because he has AP ratios on five skills, including his passive, like Orianna in that respect. The problem for Ziggs has always been that he has a very high skill cap, he's hard to play, all of his skills are skill shots, and the fact that uh, he doesn't have a lot of crowd control. But he keeps getting buffs, you're going to see him more, and he has been used in competitive play. He has been used a little bit, so expect to see Ziggs used more, because his damage output is outstanding. He has very, very high damage output. Okay, finally Zyra. Zyra has been nerfed. As you can see, our overall strategy here is to tone down Zyra's early level poke damage overall. So what has gotten nerfed her Q, the range has been reduced. Remember what I've said about range nerfs are always pretty brutal. Not by a lot, but 25 range is still 25 range. The damage has been reduced as well, 70 up to 210, down from 75 up to 235. They, uh, they did increase the AP ratio, but only by 0.05, and that's not enough to make much of a difference. So this is going to hurt a support Zyra build, because you have a lot less, you have less damage, you have less range to poke at. Here's the really bad nerf, though, for support Zyra. Look at this, passive cooldown reduction cut in half. Uh, it used to be 4 up to 20%, now it's 2 up to 10%. Yikes, that's a big nerf. Uh, the plant base damage is also reduced from 26 plus 6 per champion level down to 23 plus 0.6.5. So plant base damage reduced as well. Reduced the delay before seeds can be stepped on by enemies. Before, it was 3 seconds before they could step on a seed. Now it's 1.5, so they can kill your seeds a lot faster. The range was increased by 25. And then fixed a bug where spell, spells would rarely not turn seeds into plants. I think I've actually seen that bug before, because I know I've targeted seeds that didn't turn into plants before. Overall, though, this is a big nerf. Uh, this is, hurts Zyra quite a bit, particularly hurts the support Zyra, who doesn't get a lot of ability power. And the Stranglethorn stun no longer persists after knockup ends. Now properly enrages plants created within the Bramble Zone after Strangle Thorns has been cast. So this is a nerf all across the board. Nerf to, to Zyra is specifically a nerf to support Zyra, who like to poke with her Q, poke with Deadly Bloom. It's not crippling by any means. You can certainly still play Zyra. It's not as bad as like the Ari nerfs I was talking about before, which are like make Ari unplayable, but it hurts. I mean, it definitely makes Zyra uh, a lot weaker. Uh, that said, was it justified? Yes, was justified. Zyra was the most played support in the season three world championship. She was the most, had the best, highest win rate and uh, was picked, it picked or banned in most games. So it was definitely warranted. But it's a nerf. I mean, it, she's going to be weaker than she was before. Minor changes and bug fixes. We've got more to go through. Fortunately, we can do these faster. Uh, some of these are not minor, though. Like, some of these are not minor. This one is not minor at all. Jarvan's knock-up collision radius on his uh, flagpole toss combo, when he tosses out his flagpole and then dashes to that, the collision radius has been reduced from 260 to 180. That's a big nerf. Uh, that makes it much harder to knock somebody up. Uh, whereas before, you only had to get sort of kind of close to them. Now you really have to hit the champion to knock them up. So th this is not minor. That's a big nerf. It makes Jarvan a lot weaker. Uh, give opponents some breathing room while trying to dodge it. Yeah, it's a lot easier to dodge this now. So yeah, that's not minor. Makes Jarvan significantly weaker. Makes it a lot harder for jungle Jarvan to gank people. So keep that in mind. Kha'Zix, slow increased on his evolved Void Spikes. That was a kind of a weak skill. So giving a little more power there seems like a good idea. Master Yi, Alpha Strike, no longer hit by targeted spells, that sounds right. Mana cost reduced on Meditate, it is now a flat 50 instead of scaling up to 110. Fairly minor because uh, Yi's typically only put one point in this skill, so it doesn't matter that much until late game when you have, you know, you're like levels 15, 17, 18. But it uh, doesn't affect that much, but it's a minor buff. Nasus fixed a bug where Siphoning Strike ignores spell shields, very minor there. Rengar getting a nerf here. Rengar now de-stealths at the beginning of his leap when attacking a target out of stealth. That is a nerf and a fairly sizable one. As it says right here, Rengar's leap out of stealth is insufficient warning for his target. Uh, it's a sizable nerf, but it is warranted because what people were doing is they were playing jungle Rengar and they'd pop their ult, they'd run up to gank a lane, 
and they're just on top of you and killing you before you can do anything about it. Uh, because they don't didn't unstealth until they were already on top of you. So now you actually get some warning when he's going to jump out of stealth and hit you. Uh, good change. Good change. Uh, th that was really stupid that Rengar could just be on top of you and killing you before you knew he was there. Uh, that's bad gameplay and it's not good for the not good for the game. Shen Shadow Dash. They have reduced the collision radius at the start and end points of the dash, so it is another nerf to Shen. How many times has Shen been nerfed? More times than any of us can possibly count. Uh, we no longer believe that this is necessary. So more nerfs on Shen. Now you have to be better at targeting the Shadow Dash if you're going to get them. Again, he will probably still be used in competitive play because Shen is so useful. Uh, but it's yet another nerf on Shen's head. Swain, Swain now uh, buffed to his passive. Now additionally restores 9% of maximum mana on champion killer assist. This is pretty big deal. This is a good thing in team fights, particularly when Swain is running his ult. He tends to run out of mana. Now in a big team fight, if he's getting kills or assists, he gets mana back, so he'll be able to keep running his mana longer. Again, fairly minor quality of life, but it will help out Swain. Syndra also getting a relatively minor buff. They have increased the range on her Scatter of the Week from uh, 650 up to 700. That's noticeable. That will help her out, certainly. And a Quality of Life buff here. Dark Spheres now have arrow indicators to show where they will travel if hit by Scatter of the Week. That will make it easier for people to hit her E, her Scatter of the Week stun. Again, one of the things that holds Syndra back is she is very difficult to play, and this is a difficult skill to use. It's hard to get that stun. Unleashed Power now displays a counter that tracks the number of Dark Spheres that will be fired. Okay, another little tooltip help there. So, I don't, th I still don't think we'll see much Syndra play, but she's, she's, she's actually a pretty fun champion. She's just hard to play. Teemo fixed a bug where Mushroom gave experience. Was that a bug? I thought that was intended. Maybe, maybe not. Thresh, attack speed per level increased to 3% from 1%. Thresh's basic wa attack windup is reduced by 0.25% per 1% attack speed rather than the standard 1%. I do not know what that means. I had it explained to me on Reddit. Basically, from what I've heard, if you are playing a AD Thresh and attack speed, and you build a lot of attack speed, uh, this makes it worse. Basically, um, something like that. Like if you stack tons of attack speed, then he's worse off as a result of this. That's what I've heard. I'm not investigating further because he's a support, and people are not really going to be building tons and tons of attack speed on Thresh. Trindamir, they are, this is a minor nerf to Trindamir. The cooldown refund on critically striking minions and monsters down to one second from two. The idea is make it harder to safely split push all day, as it says here, uh, is the idea there. So basically, anytime Trindamir gets a critical strike, it reduces the cooldown on Spinning Slash. They have made it so he gets less cooldown reduction, one second instead of two. Uh, so that he can't just split push all day in complete safety. And then they fixed a bug with Vladimir's ultimate that sometimes prevented casting of transfusion and tides of blood. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mana cost reductions on ultimate. This is another way of updating League of Legends. A lot of the older champions have high mana costs. That is related to the fact that League originally started out as something that was inspired by Defense of the Ancients. And Dota has much higher mana costs on ultimates. Newer champions do not have that. So the older champions getting mana cost reductions to be more in line with current champion design. Ash in particular, I can't tell you how many times I've seen Ash players not have enough mana to fire their arrow. So they're reducing the mana cost there, and that will make uh, just makes things easier, particularly for new players who don't manage their mana as effectively. Also on Leona Alt, Soraka Alt, and by the way, check this out. Flat mana cost of 100 down from 250. Whew, talk about an expensive alt. Similar thing for Varus, although that's pretty minor. And look at Victor, his mana on his ultimate from 225 down to 100. So Victor players, um, all of them, there are literally, I heard somebody say, there are literally dozens of us Victor players. They're all quite happy with this. Uh, that was clearly too high and out of line with current champion design. All right, alternate map design. There's a lot of stuff being changed here on Dominion, Crystal Scar. They are removing the self-healing penalty. Uh, they are changing the speed shrine buff, so they now del decay over the duration. Fixed a bug with Teemo. Uh, changes to itemization on Dominion, on uh, Aram and Twisted Treeline. To Spectral Lantern, the Lightbringer, Hextech Sweeper. I'm sorry, I don't play these maps. I'm not going to talk about them. They've added the turret description to Twisted Tree Line and Dominion. They've changed Blackfire Torch and Tw Twin Shadows, blah, blah, blah. But I don't play these maps. This video is about an hour long, and I'm not going to try and guess as to what these are. You'll have to go somewhere else to find out more information. And then finally, turrets in bot game modes now display an indicator of their attack range and their current attack status. Um... This is not just in bot game modes. They now show the uh, attack range and attack... Oh, no, is this is this in all games or is this just co-op versus AI? 
I guess this is not for general play. They uh, I, they should add this for all modes. If this is only if this is only in co-op for AI, they should add this for all modes because it's really nice to see the attack range on the towers. I don't know why this isn't in the regular game. Yeah, I had seen this in co-op versus AI, and I assumed that this was just in all game modes, but apparently it's not. Uh, this should be in all game modes. It's really nice. You can literally see right where the turret range is. I don't know why this wouldn't be in the main game as well. Like, why would you not want to see the exact range at which the turret's going to shoot at you? I, I fail to understand why that wouldn't just be in every game mode. That's really, really useful to have and to see when the turret's shooting at you. Uh, basically, it's a green display if you're outside the turret, and then it turns to red if you're inside and it's shooting at you. So yeah, right, put this in all game modes. It's really good. Uh, then finally, players who earn silver in Season 2 will now have silver profile borders until the end of the season. Hooray for all one week until the season ends. Congratulations. Uh, I guess that's nice. Okay, but anyway, it was a big patch. All kinds of changes being made. Again, the biggest ones are lots and lots of nerfs. Nerfs to different champions. Aatrox nerf, Ari nerf, Corky nerf, Fizz minor nerf, but a nerf. Rework to Heimerdinger, tiny, tiny nerf to Jinx, sorta kinda a nerf to Kastin, but not really. Morgana got buffed, Olaf got buffed, Sivir rework, hard to say. Zed nerf, Zig buff, Zyra nerf, Jarvan nerf, uh, Rengar nerf, Shen nerf, <laughs> Teemo nerf, blah, blah, blah. Trindamir nerf, you can see. So it was, a nerf, it was a patch that was very heavy on nerfs. It was taking what was seen at Worlds and then hitting the champions that were seen as being too strong. So that was basically the idea of this patch. Anyway, the next patch should be very exciting. The next patch will probably include the Season 4 changes. We'll have things like the trinkets, the new ward systems, the new jungle system. I'm looking forward to that. I may actually get a PBE account and actually test that out on the public beta environment just because I'm not really that interested in League right now. I'm, I'm just waiting for the changes to come. So I might do that. We'll see. It depends on how much free time I have. But in any case, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We just about hit an hour on this video. So I hope it wasn't too long. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, have a great week. I'll see you guys again later. Until then, take care.